So, Cinemax, have you heard that the new Nintendo app Mitomo has come out? I have. Now, did you, did, did you get it? Because I did. Kitty, I think both of us already know the answer. <laughs> That's true, yeah. Because this is an app centered around like having friends and like interacting with people, and you don't do either of those things. <laughs> But anyways, uh, I did actually download this new app, and it's pretty fun. It's very, very simple. There's not, like, a lot going on in it. Um, basically, you just make a me and then answer questions, and every question you answer, like, every friend's answer that you read, you get coins, and you can use those to buy different outfits for your me. So it's very, very basic, but so far it's pretty fun. And um, as of this recording, the downloads of it have actually exceeded 3 million people, which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And, of course, it... It bears noting the fact that this is technically the very first app that Nintendo has ever developed for not just cell phones, but any platform that's not related to Nintendo. Well, there's actually a reason for that. Uh, I found a quote from Iwata saying that in the past I have opposed making smartphone and tablet versions of Nintendo titles. Prices for content aimed at smartphones and tablets are falling quickly. I'm still wary of the category. So he kind of didn't want to try and take a step towards that direction. However, obviously, since he passed, and I wonder if it's because he passed that they went ahead and moved forward with uh, with mobile games now. I'm not sure, but... See, as far as myself goes, I'm wondering about something else. Given the fact that the Wii U sales were struggling, to put it nicely, mm -hmm. and the fact that Iwata was so resistant to the idea of trying to develop apps for mobile devices which are obviously huge these days mm -hmm. i am starting to question the circumstances of his death <laughs> because you know the japanese they have close ties with the yakuza and if iwata if his vision of the company's future did not align with the other members the other board of directors well you know Maybe he had to resign one way or another. <laughs> I'm not insinuating anything, but, you know, accidents do happen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's it's it makes you wonder, but at the same time, it's not just this Mitomo game that, that Nintendo has been planning for a while. They also are in the middle of developing Pokemon Go, which is going to be another mobile app obviously set it around Pokemon and the Pokemon community is extremely excited about this and everybody is super hype and they've actually been doing beta testing for that in Japan but they haven't been able to release a lot of like screenshots or information because anybody who does leak stuff actually gets removed from the beta testing program so and it's, it actually was surprising that I went to download Mitomo and I was expecting it to be like 199 or something but it's actually it's completely free and after hearing Iwata's quote, I'm wondering if they did that on purpose, that they're kind of testing the waters with people's reactions to this. Like, okay, how many pe are people going to actually download this? What are the ratings going to be? You know, is this actually going to be worthwhile? And then, if it is, they'll probably the next mobile app that they do will probably actually have some kind of price tag attached to it. That's what I'm guessing. Yeah, it does seem that this Mitomo app is basically Nintendo testing the waters because, let's be pragmatic here, if they were to invest time and, more importantly, money into developing, say, a Super Mario Brothers game for the iOS, not knowing whether or not people would be interested in buying that game, and that thing tanked horribly, mm. then obviously that would have been a huge loss for Nintendo. Whereas if they develop something cheap, something quick, like this Mitomo thing, because, you know, it's easier to program uh, freaking me characters as opposed to <laughs> yeah. entire Mario levels, this is a good way, at the very least I think this is a good way, and a pragmatic way, uh, on Nintendo's part, to test the waters as far as, like, how just how much interest there would be in Nintendo property on third-party devices. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, right now they can't really afford to have any kind of additional failures after how much the Wii U kind of tanked. And I know that a lot of Nintendo fanboys had, had a lot of high hopes for it, but the numbers are just not matching that and i read somewhere that um, nintendo announced that it could manufacture 8 million units a year of the wii u and since the wii u came out in 2011 i believe that there were only around 10 million units sold so you know you can do the math like between 2011 and 2016 8 million units a year they've got like they probably have a huge stockpile of these 
that they're just sitting on and they're not selling. And so it, hasn't it been confirmed that they're actually going to stop production of Wii U consoles? Yeah, there are two articles that we will reference and a link to in the description box. The first one comes from TechRadar.com, which states, and I quote, that the Wii U will almost definitely go down in history as Nintendo's worst selling console. Just how dire is Nintendo's need to jump ship on the Wii U? It is currently sitting at around 10 million units sold total, and even a new Legend of Zelda game won't likely double system sales to the point where it can match the GameCube's near 22 million sales mark, let alone the Wii's 100 million unit high bar. So, like you said, Nintendo was planning on manufacturing 8 million units per year, so 2016 minus 2011, that's 5, 5 times 8, so they were expecting to sell at the very least 45 million units mm -hmm. total, and yet they've only managed to sell about 10 million so far. And an article from Cinema Blend is another one that we looked at, and they were also talking about pretty much the same stuff that the other article mentioned, just that the Wii U is not doing well at all, and that was the article that people were discussing how many units actually sold for this, and I didn't even know that it was that bad. Like, it's... Mm -hmm. From what I had seen, there were some graphs that I looked up, and the GameCube had always been the one that had sold the least, but now the Wii U is even lower than that, so... I mean, honestly, I think it's probably a pretty smart decision on Nintendo's behalf that they are just stopping production of this because why waste all that plastic you know if they're not gonna sell why continue to make them yeah and obviously the reason why we're getting a new console from them so quickly well you know five years you can argue whether or not that's quick or not but uh still the Wii held for a good 2007 2011 so huh okay so the Wii held for less than that. But anyways, the point I'm trying to make here is that Nintendo seems to be rushing to get the NX out the door, and mm -hmm. it's understandable why, because the Wii U did not prove to be a viable successor to the Wii, because again, 100 million units sold versus just 10. Yeah, well, I mean, and honestly, part of that is Nintendo's fault, though, because they made a lot of really bad decisions with the Wii U. One of them was the marketing. The marketing just, just did not speak to audiences, and so a lot of people just didn't buy it. And I remember that you guys even talked about this way back in a different podcast um, that we did a couple years ago. Yeah, mo if memory serves, most people were confused about the what the Wii U actually was. Like, mm -hmm. a, a majority... A significant section of the consumer base was convinced that the Wii U was just going to be like an extension or even a just a peripheral device for the Wii, where it's like, hey, here's the Wii touchscreen mm -hmm. or something like that, because they focused so much on the controller that there was a certain level of ambiguity as far as like, is this a new console, is it not, plus the title, the Wii U, it's not the Wii number two mm -hmm. or something similar that would signify a difference uh, because with the 3ds it's like oh it's a ds but it's a nintendo 3ds there's a new yeah. 3d function so it's clearer than just adding an extra letter uh with the wii u plus the fact that again nintendo puts so much stock into the controller i.e the hardware mm -hmm. thinking that that's what's gonna uh, you know ship all of these units but it really didn't because it's kind of an interesting idea, but like with motion controls, the ways in which you can implement that device into the game is very limited when you get down to it. It's like, okay, you can move yeah. some of the items from the screen, like the HUD display, mm -hmm. on, 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 on the smaller controller screen, and you can put like maps and maybe inventory items there. But besides that, unless we're talking about a game that has like 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 you know one of those fatal frame games where mm -hmm. with the camera a, with the camera yeah, yeah or maybe or or maybe like in Silent Hill Shattered Memories where your character has a cell phone mm -hmm. like that's kind of where the capabilities of the Wii U controller the Wii gamepad whatever it's called begin and end mm -hmm. because it's like okay it's just the second screen that's about it yeah and I, honestly I think that that's that factored into one of the other problems was that there just weren't enough good titles on the Wii U for people to actually want to go out and buy it. And I think that it's because third-party developers had a really hard time working with that kind of setup where they had to factor in, okay, 
there's going to be this handheld screen. What are we going to do with that? How is that? And I mean, from what I've heard, it was kind of hard to program games on the Wii U like setup. Like I, I don't really understand mm -hmm. how software and stuff works, but that's what I've read. So that kind of kept a lot of third party developers from coming into it. But from what I've heard with the NX, uh, they're going to start out with a third party title right away, like Dragon Quest games, I believe. So, mm -hmm. and those are from a, a different developer. So obviously, Nintendo is already trying to look back and see what did we do wrong with the Wii U? Let's not do that again. And so they're starting off with a like a different approach this time. There's going to be like third party titles available from the get go, which to me says that the NX is a lot easier to like work with internally than the Wii U was. Yeah, there is a post on our forums which reports on a potential leak of like the full details about the NX, what it's going to be like, how powerful is it going to be like, how easy it would be to program for. According to at the very least one testimony from a third party developer, it is very easy to port stuff uh, on the NX because, and I quote, it's as easy as just clicking compile and there you go, your game runs on the console. And if that is indeed true, then that's great, because one thing that the Wii U has not had um, over the course of its run is a strong third-party support. Mm -hmm. yeah. Second-party support, yeah, there have been some uh, companies like Platinum Games, obviously, developing games like the Wonderful 101 and obviously a port of Bayonetta 1 and mm -hmm. Bayonetta 2, which was a Wii U exclusive, but third-party developers, not so much. Yeah, and I've also read a bunch of other speculation about what the NX may have. Um, obviously, I think, the, like I said earlier, the only thing that has been confirmed is that it's going to be a fusion of a home console and a handheld. What that means exactly, nobody is really sure just yet. But I've heard some other ideas that people have been wondering if they're going to do this. Um, something about having it be cloud-based for streaming games, and then obviously the fully touchscreen-based controller with no buttons except for like analog sticks. That one, I wonder if that's actually been confirmed but the, the, the last one is actually really interesting. I heard a couple people talking about something called like a, a supplemental computing device that you could like either buy it separate or like some systems will have this and some systems won't so that it's going to be a really, really powerful setup like rivaling gaming PCs or something. Because I know that that was something that the Wii U brand and like Nintendo as a whole kind of lacked a lot of um, interest from gamers because they were like, oh, well, they look at it and they're like, oh, it's just like casual games, it's just kid stuff, and the hardware isn't very, you know, high tech, and it doesn't have like awesome graphics or whatever, so they stayed away from that and went instead towards PS4 and, and Xbox and all that, so if the NX is actually aiming to be able to stand up and be just as good if not better as PlayStation and Xbox then that will probably bring in the hardcore gaming crowds again. Yeah, unfortunately the sad reality of these days is that a lot of people, well there are still obviously hardcore gamers who are interested in dedicated gaming machines, they want consoles to be consoles, but let's not forget that the quote unquote casual gamers there's a large percentage of them, and they're the ones who bring in a lot of the money. I mean, let's not forget that, that they were responsible for the success of the Wii, the casual crowd. Mm -hmm. And even with something like the Xbox 360 and the PS3, as well as the new versions, the Xbox One and the PS4, obviously there are hardcore gamers, but at the same time there's also lots of people who buy these consoles because they're also kind of like these, uh, you know, jack-of-all-trades multimedia machines. Mm -hmm. So... You know, like a guy goes out and gets himself a PS4 because it gives him access to the internet, he can watch Netflix, and maybe also later down the line he'll also get himself a game or two. Same thing with the Xbox One, mm -hmm. whereas with Nintendo, I guess you can give them some props for this. They have stuck to what has historically made them great, and that is making consoles, as opposed to these, you know, PC slash console hybrids. But at the same time, that's also what I would argue has alienated a lot of people with the Wii U because, mm -hmm. like, if you're really into Nintendo games, like, if you're a Nintendo fanboy or a fanatic or just a rational fan, if such a thing exists, but that's, <laughs> that's debatable, but whatever, 
Um, and if you're into their games, then yeah, sure, you're going to go out, you're going to get yourself a Wii U, and you're going to enjoy all those first-party games like Mario, Zelda, Donkey Kong, uh, Fatal Frame... Pokemon. Fire Emblem, and so on and so forth. Well, yes, that too, of course, you have to bring it up. <laughs> but if you're not that kind of person, if you're someone who's just looking for... A machine that will let you play games as well as do some additional stuff like, like I don't know, listen to Pandora Radio and or watch Netflix. Yeah. Obviously, the Wii U is not going to be your first choice. So if Nintendo is going to move away from that, have more third-party support, maybe have it have a drastically different design and even feel as opposed to the more wholesome we are going to make a game out of everyone feel that both the <laughs> Wii and the Wii U had then there's potential that the system might turn out to be successful. So basically to wrap up this conversation, I think that for the first time in a long time, Nintendo, it seems to be making a lot of really good decisions. Like, you know, three things. First of all, stopping the Wii U production because it's just not going well for their company. Second is they're dipping their toes into mobile games with Mitomo, which obviously has been pretty popular so far, and also Pokemon Go, which a ton of people are hyped about. And then finally, um, if the rumors are true for everything we've heard about the NX, it's really going to be a lot better than what the Wii U was. So, I mean, for the first time in a long time, I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what Nintendo is going to bring to the table. Yeah, I'm not going to say that I'm optimistic about Nintendo's future. Um, maybe, like, cautious optimism at best. But it does seem that, I know this is not a very nice thing to say, but with Iowata's passing, Nintendo has kind of taken its head out of its ass. <laughs> and they are surveying the land, and they are noticing certain trends where it's like, aha, okay, so all the cool kids that are into this mobile shit these days, so... Mm -hmm why don't we try to plant our flag on the App Store and have a couple of Nintendo-themed um, properties there? Because the thing is, Nintendo has a very good pedigree of games. Like, when people think of Nintendo, they think of happy childhood memories, of mm -hmm. playing uh, Mario, Castlevania, Zelda, Metroid. And I would wager that a lot of people would be on board with Nintendo releasing some of its smaller games that you would normally associate with their handheld devices, like, say, Dr. Mario, for example, mm -hmm. on on the App Store. I, again, I can see a lot of people buying that because the game is similar to Tetris, and who wouldn't want to play something like that on their phone while they're uh, at a bus stop or waiting for a doctor's appointment or something like that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I can, as an adult, I don't really have a lot of free time these days to like sit down and play a game. A lot of my gaming is done like in 15 minute increments here and there, like, you know, as Max said, like while I'm waiting for the bus or going to a doctor appointment or something like that. And so if Nintendo had more mobile games, like I feel like I definitely would actually try and buy them. And because it's just it's just a nice way to kind of like pass some time and they have a lot of like little mini game type stuff on 3ds right now in the me plaza thing that comes with every 3ds it's just like a lot of little small games that you could play for like five minutes or something and then move on so if they like focus on some of those ideas and like that kind of stuff, just smaller games, simple stuff that just passes the time and bring that to mobile games, I think it would do really well. Yeah, obviously I don't expect them to make a Legend of Zelda game or a Metroid game for the cell phone devices, but at the same time, Nintendo trying to branch out into different systems, systems that are not uh, exclusive to Nintendo, would be a good way for them to remain irrelevant in the consciousness of the majority of the consumers or the casual gamers, call them what you will, but still. Because otherwise, these days, unless you're a dedicated Nintendo fan, you're not gonna go out and buy yourself a Nintendo gaming machine because, well, given the kind of struggles that the Wii U had, and given the limited third-party support, like even in the previous generations, like I'm thinking about the, the Xbox 360 and the PS3 generation, 
Uh, people talked about the Wii as like the the additional console, mm -hmm. the auxiliary console. Like if you want a game, if you want to play all the great games of this current generation, obviously you need to buy yourself a PS3 or an Xbox 360. And then the Wii is a nice little bonus if you want to play the, the Nintendo exclusives. And the same thing kind of happened with the Wii U where it, it had a couple of very strong exclusive titles, but z almost zero third-party support. Uh, some popular third-party games like Batman Arkham City, for example, or Deus Ex Human Revolution, but those were ported like several years after the fact, yeah. uh, after everyone had played them. So if Nintendo can remedy all of that with their next console, the NX, maybe there's still hope. Yeah, I mean, we're just gonna have to wait and see because, again, everything is just speculation, but... Personally, I'm, I know you said you're not optimistic, but I'm pretty optimistic about what Nintendo has for us coming up in the future. Well, of course you're optimistic because you want to see Nintendo make more Pokemon games. For well, you. yeah, <laughs> it's exactly it. Of course, like I'm always going to love Pokemon. Come on now. Mm, accuses me of being a cynic and then admits that the only reason she wants to see Nintendo prevail is for purely selfish reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Katie. Good job. You're welcome.